So my goal now is to get these packaged up nice so that uh, nothing happens to them. And I'm going to ship them out to Colorado. So hopefully Perry will get them soon. Let's see what happens. See if I could do a little YouTube magic. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Man, that was easy. All right, so the continuity-minded people out there might have just noticed something. I'm going to stop, let you go back uh, and look at the beginning. What's, what's different? <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is indicative of what has been going on with this Bell Project. Um, Matt uh, over at uh, Inside the Mind of Matt, wonderful guy. You need to go check him out. Um, he made me three of these little pattern things. And I had a picture taken of him mounted to my camera and I stood here and I tried to get them in my hand just right and I got them where exactly like they were supposed to be <laughs> and it was backwards oh well we fixed it fixed it with a little uh, you know, switch it around there thing more of that internet magic as he called it all right let me just show you real quick how we're going to set this thing up and talk about a couple of things that I've done a little different here uh, First off, I'm going to have my uh, runner down in the drag. It'll be in there sort of like this. Uh, the sprue, which is inside, will mount here. And then I will have a um, surge trap up on it. This will be up into the cope. So we're going to have, basically, all we're going to do is we're going to have this runner in the drag. Everything else is going to be up in the cope. I have a runner, a gate that I've built that will sit atop the runner like so. Now the gate is, I've calculated the gate to have three times the volume of the cross section of this runner. And the reason I did that is I want to slow the velocity of that forward edge of metal. I want to slow it down a little bit. This should slow it down, I would guess, by a third, since it's three times as large. We'll have the same amount of volume going through, but it can run through at a slower rate. So um, or at least that leading edge will be moving slower. So that's what that's all about there. And that will go here uh, against uh, right atop the, the runner. And then the bell will mount up right up against the, um, the gate. And we'll come in. I'm going to actually come in from the side. Uh, I could... I realize coming in from the bottom would probably give me a much easier, a cleaner uh, place to break it off, or not break it off, but cut it off and grind it smooth. It certainly wouldn't be as noticeable, um, but I'm going to come in from the side this time and just to see what happens. I've also uh, thought about and had some discussions about doing a more horse show kind of arrangement where we have metal coming in from both sides and filling it um, this way. I'm going to try this first. We're going to see what happens. Anyway, atop the bell, once the bell is in there, will be the, um, the investment that uh, Matt made me. And we're going to go ahead and set that guy right on top of there. When I do this, we're going to have cut this rim away. I just use my belt sander for doing that. And that will give me, um, well, that will give me the crown. It's supposed to look like that, but came out looking like that. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get that done. So let's go ahead and uh, get going here and start ramming things up. Alright, so I'm going to do a little voice over here uh, just to talk about a couple little things because you know me, I got a lot to talk about. Um, first thing I'm going to do here is I am ramming up what is called a, uh, I call it a false drag. It is a drag that is not going to be used as the drag in this mold. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm building up a platform um, that I can stick my runner into and then I can ram up the cope with the runner in the right place and I can orient all the pieces I need to. Later on you'll see me tear this, this uh, drag apart and then repack re it when I uh, have the bell actually up in the cope. Alright, so there you see I got my runner um, sort of positioned into the uh, drag. I've just pressed it down in there because I'm going to tear it out. But the, the idea here is so I can get my 
um, my bell, my pattern for my bell, my pattern for my gate and the, and the sprue uh, oriented properly. Uh, so when I start filling in the cope here, here uh, everything's going to be in the right place. Uh, you'll see me later on when I take the cope off and I redo the, and I tear the drag apart. I'll be able to lay that runner right back where it was and everything will be aligned nice and neat. Now you notice I had the little white um, uh, investment mold that Matt made me on there for a second while I realized hey, I don't need that on there while I'm trying to fill this thing. Uh, and one thing I did a little bit differently here that I've normally done too is I am filling the or I'm ramming the uh, the cope in sections. I'm really um, filling it, you know, partially full, ramming it down, filling it again, ramming it down, filling it again, ramming it down. Uh, I found that the first time I rammed this thing up, I didn't have a really good ram job, and I had a lot of creases in the sand and things like that that showed up in the surface of the bell. And so I wanted to try this a little bit differently. The other thing, you'll notice there at the end of my stick that I've been ramming with, I've kind of put a little bit of a, a point on the end of it. Uh, that is to help ram the sand um, and, and sort of push it to uh, help it uh, form together in a tight pattern rather than ramming it with a flat surface which is just going to create strata or layers of sand in there. This so it should be a stronger mold um, just because I use that little point. So we got it all rammed up here. Um, we're going to uh, pretty quickly here after I strike it all off we're going to go ahead and turn it over uh, take the take the drag off and re-ram it. I struggled getting this thing off. It's so heavy. It just stuck in there. So there's, I go ahead and pull the gate out or the runner out. Uh, I'm going to pull all the sand out of that false drag that I uh, that I put together. Uh, I spent a lot of time cleaning myself up after <laughs> during this process. So now I've got the bat, we got the cope um, full. Everything's in place. Uh, sorry about the framing here. I yeah whatever. There goes the the, the runner back onto this plate exactly in the same orientation it was before. We're going to go ahead and fill in the bottom half of the or the bottom side of the uh, bell. Uh, pack that in there real well. Um, you're going to see a little bit later here, maybe not as well as I should have, but uh, we're going to fill in the uh, fill in the drag here, get it all get it all struck off, and um, uh, we'll flip the whole thing over. Actually, I had to kind of roll it. It's too, <laughs> it's too heavy to pick up. All right, now I made a sprue extension. This was a, uh, basically what I did is I modeled up um, as if my sprue were extended about, I think I went about 150 millimeters up. Uh, I think that's what I did. Uh, and I basically just kept, it kept the same angle. Uh, I just dropped that down into the original sprue hole, which is probably a bad, terrible, awful, evil, wicked thing to do. Um, but I'm going to blow it all out of there, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'm building that extension box you just saw me ram up, uh, so I can get some more height out of my sprue. And the reason being is, with the trouble I had getting that um, original crown to fill, um, the assumption is that, that I didn't have enough height for the metal to sort of seek its own equilibrium and get up high enough uh, into the uh, into the mold to, to do what it needed to do. So there you see me just I just blew out the the sprue. Uh, I got the runner coming out now. Now you'll notice that the um, bell, the pattern uh, for the bell, half the sand is in the uh, drag and half of it ended up inside the uh, inside the bell. It broke on me when I pulled it apart. Now I just tried to get it back into the same spot um, and get it oriented in the same way. That's resulted in a you'll see that see that little dark spot up on top. That resulted in sort of a little, I don't know, called a lump inside the, the top of the bell. But basically there it is. We have our, um, our, our, our flask rammed up. I just opened up the tape on that vent on the uh, part. Now I'm doing the, the pouring basin now. And I'm actually, I've dug it pretty deep. It's probably about 40 millimeters deep. 
uh, and I expanded the sides around a little bit. You really couldn't see me doing it too much there, but uh, I made it larger so I'd have a bigger target to pour on. Now I'm having all kinds of trouble trying to orient this thing on here in the right spot. I got my flashlight thing going on my phone trying to figure it out and not good. Notice where the ridge is. The ridge is actually down pretty low in this thing. Um, inside the basin. I wanted to be able to have plenty of metal coming in uh, so that I would fill the sprue and keep it full. You'll see when I pour this thing, this thing pours ultra, ultra fast. So we're going to be ready to go to the pour now. Everything is ready to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pour this thing. Okay, I just left my furnace run. You can hear it in the background here. Now watch this pour. It takes five seconds for this pour. It is taking metal as fast as I can pour it and you'll see that it looks like it's sort of running over this, the ridge. I don't, I, I don't think I got a whole lot of air down there. I think it was, I kept it pretty full, but boy, I'll tell you what, I poured as fast as I could pour for this thing to fill. I was amazed at how fast it took the metal. You'll also notice here that I got the weight, the mold weighted down. That first, that big block of lead is almost 50 pounds. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. And then I got just a piece of pipe weighs maybe a pound or two, but, uh, uh, I wanted to be sure my, my mold stayed uh, down. I didn't want it to float on me here. All righty, well, <laughs> let's see what we got. This is encouraging, really encouraging for me. That means it came up all the way through that, uh, that investment. So I'm not going to put this back in my boxes because it's so hot. See if we can't lift this off of here. See if we got us a bell. Oh. Well, it went all the way around. Pretty excited about that. That is a bell. Finishes not bad, better than the last one for sure. That is hot still. Alright, well here it is. I need to bust that off there, but uh, you see the sprue uh, came all the way down into the surge trap through a single gate, bigger gate. Hopefully we slowed the metal down coming in. Uh, got a great finish right here, but it's kind of goofy looking on this side. I'm not sure hot or colder. I Interesting. Very interesting to me. I want to get it off and see what it Ooh, that one went up. All right, well, I think we got it. I'm going to come back uh, with this thing cleaned off, and we'll show it to you. All right, well, there it is. I haven't cleaned it. I just took it out of the mold, took the investment off it. Um, you know, <laughs> maybe not my best effort, but I am pretty darn pleased with that cannon up on top or that uh, crown up on top. That worked awesome. Um, this piece, the little thing, it's funny, I tapped it and it just, it just broke right off. Uh, I guess it's brittle stuff, but I got to cut, there's the gate. Um, I got to cut that off. I got to finish grinding that off. I'm going to clean up the edge. Um, Interesting thing, this side finished really nice on its own, and the side where the gate was has this sort of almost burned rough look on it. Um, I don't know, I mean, is it heat? Is it, I'm not sure what caused that, but the, the back side definitely came out nicer than the front side. So let me get it cleaned up and we'll close this thing out. All right, kids, there it is. We got the uh, crown or the uh, cannon up on top. 
<laughs> I think it looks incredible. Shape is right. The thing, uh, I modeled it right after the uh, original. I think it's time to try to ring it. See what she sounds like. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, I want to thank Matt over at Inside the Mind of Matt again for making the uh, investment mold for me. Uh, I think that turned out pretty darn nice. Yeah, it's not perfect. Um, but then again, what is? <laughs> there it is, my Liberty Bell. How cool. You guys have a great day. And go check out Matt's video. It's right there.